Hello and welcome to the Keto Man's Club podcast. We're glad you're here, where each week we talk about men's health and lifestyle. We do so with the foundation of the ketogenic diet and lifestyle. If you don't know what keto is, stick around and you'll find out. The podcast will bring you real honest fun. Each week we strive to uncover the tips and tricks that you can use in your everyday life to maximize your overall health and find the clearest path to becoming the best version of yourself that you were meant to be. Hello and welcome to this week's episode of the Keto Man's Club podcast. My name is Chris. I'm one of your hosts. And as always, I am joined by the full cast, Jim and Alberto. How's it going, Jim? Um, It is good. COVID-19 continues on, but so do we. So yep. I'll roll with that. Yeah, very good. Alberto, what's new? All kinds of stuff. But uh, yeah, I mean, one, I said, one. I guess I would say one positive outcome of all this is I'm becoming uh, very friendly with my neighbors at a you know safe distance, and obviously spending a lot more time with the family when I'm not at work. You know, weekends are a thing of relaxation because you really can't go anywhere. So you know, getting stuff done around here when I can, and, and that's uh that's working out quite well. I mean, our our one neighbor was trimming trees today and took out our internet. So that's Oops. I guess if there's one side to people being home too often, <laughs> it's doing extra <laughs> stuff and affecting your neighbors. But now he's a great guy, and it's actually funny because. Uh, we created what we call a sharing stump in between our yards. And, you know, like, so like he got a bunch of the brisket I smoked and a bunch of the pulled pork. And anytime they cook something like we'll, we clean everything up real good that we'll put on the stump and then we'll send a text message, to, like check the sharing stump. <laughs> <laughs> and so t- today on the sharing stump, he said, check the sharing stump. And uh, I was going up there and it, it looked like a, a brownie wrapped in saran wrap. And so I'm, I, I was like, oh, okay, well, whatever, take it home for the kids. And then, uh, I, so then he texts and it was, uh, I have to check the text message, but it's some sort of a uh, sous vide uh, wagyu beef rib Ooh, that was prepared in wow. some, I don't know, some fancy fashion. But yeah, it was a uh, it's a piece of artwork. I almost feel bad eating it, but I'm not. I'm I'm gonna eat it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, it was it was made to be eaten. It should be eaten. And I'll have to post a picture of it because it is a uh, it's something to behold. Yeah, I bet. <laughs> I bet. Jim, how how's uh how's life been trying to to deal with all all the craziness being, you know, a banker guy? You know, um I, as I was telling one of my coworkers, my younger coworkers cuz now I'm of that age where I have experience. Uh, <laughs> so, I was telling him though, um when the housing crisis happened in 2008 and when we had 9/11 nearly 20 years ago, um, you, there were, there were similar thoughts in the media and everything about, you know, what's going to happen next and the uncertainty and everything. Now, keep in mind, nine 11 was pre Facebook and everything like that. The 2008 housing crisis was in the very early stages of social media. So this is the first time something of this magnitude that impacts truly the world is happening instantaneously in front of us. Mm-hmm. What's um, on the banking side of things, our doors are open in the sense that we're doing drive through stuff. We aren't open lobby wise because we're trying to be cautious of everything. Um, but um, by the time this gets aired, um, there's going to be so much change in the in the financial world. Um, we've had a number of people who are businesses that are inquiring about the CARES program, which is through the federal government, the Small Business Administration is doing disaster relief loans, all these different things. And everybody's just trying to grasp at stuff to help them get through it. But yet there's so much information, it's hard to get to it and know what's right, what's changing tomorrow, so that when you fill out a form the next day, nobody's calling you like, ah, you did that wrong because we changed it last night at 5.03 after you submitted it at 5 o'clock. So I, I, I'm kind of optimistic on things. Um, in Indiana, we've seen a lot of social distancing, and I'm hopeful that you guys are experiencing that as well. You know, you've got the what did you call it, Alberto? The stump? What was it? Your the sharing stump? The sharing stump. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like something from uh, what was that book we had to read as kids? Um, uh, the the, the kids, giving tree? <laughs> no, it's where the kids take over the the island and they have the conch that they have. Oh to, yeah, yeah, Lord of the, Lord of the Flies. Lord of the Flies. That's it. Yeah. Yeah, but you don't want anybody beating you up and killing you kind of thing over the stump. So let's not let that happen. Um, It's going to be it. I'm trying to be as positive as I can. I'm trying to be real about it as well with coworkers. And it's going to be a struggle. But, you know, we put signs up in our window today. Um, 
we've got window panes that are framed out. So we put things up, you know, stay healthy, t- Bloomington, which is where I live, or, you know, we're in this together, just stuff that if it's a little bit of encouragement for somebody, then we've, we've done our part for that moment. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, those, I saw those pictures and that was a, a really cool, cool idea to, to just be in, and I'm seeing all sorts of different things like that. That's kind of, the 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 really cool thing about us being in a social media state of of being is that we have so much um in the way of people being able to encourage and lift each other up every every social organization every church every mm-hmm. um group like the keto man's club we we seem to only have gotten tighter knit and, and lean more on each other and uh, leaned in on our technological connections uh, because our, our physical connections are being restricted on some level. And, and uh, at this point, the, the murmur of, Oh, we don't have this or we don't have that is definitely in the background now. And now we're, we're definitely feeling uh, more of the, okay, this is our, our, current reality. I won't say a new reality because I don't think it's going to be this way for forever. Um, mm-hmm. But it's our, our, our current reality. And uh, so let's make the best of it. And I'm seeing lots of great conversations online between my friends and, 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 uh, and all of that and connecting uh, in, in new ways. And, you know, it brings new challenges. I'm, I'm, I'm my workload is is very heavy right now at, with with stuff from church, and I don't mind it at all. Um, I, I enjoy it greatly, in, in fact. But we're uh, we had rehearsal last night, which was mainly a, sa- a technical sound check and also kind of working out some of the the kinks uh, arrangement wise on on what we wanted to do with the songs that we were leading for Sunday. But we're planning to record our worship tomorrow, and then I'm going to take the video and the audio, and I'm going to mix and master and all of that. And I just did um, uh, a I had we I recorded our rehearsal last night so that I could kind of get a a feel for the type of things that I was going to need to do to all the different instruments and voices and whatnot and kind of get some basic you know, mix down. And I'm like, Oh boy, (laughs) this is going to be a lot of work uh, for two songs um, and whatnot, but it's going to be good. It's going to be worth it. And it's going to be, you know, it's going to be what is going to be helpful for my community of my church to be able to continue to stay connected and, and uplifted and, and whatnot. And so this is very definitely a season where we're all taking these uh, new, new challenges, but all I'm seeing across the board is people rising up to the challenge. Mm-hmm. Yep. So we're going to make it work one way yep. or the other, brother. Absolutely. Well, let's do some shout outs real quick. Um, and then we'll, we've got a topic of the week that we're going to involve our guests in. And uh, this can be be a good conversation. I'm, I'm excited. So, uh, Jim, do you have your, your guy picked out? I do. Uh, so my shout out is from um, a couple of weeks back. I haven't gotten to this gentleman yet. Uh, Kevin Bonning, Bonningberger. Say that five times fast. Uh, Kevin Bonningberger Sr., actually. Uh, who put up one of those uh, before and afters from actually a, his before was from about seven years ago. He doesn't remember his weight at the time, but the shirt, he's got the uh, St. Patrick's Day shirt. That's when this photo was uh, posted up in the Keto Man's Club, uh, was a 4X. He's definitely not a 4X now. He's now a large, actually, and uh, just uh, said it made his day to see the transformation. So uh, kudos to Kevin B. on the big change. Yeah, very good. Alberto? Uh, I think we can all agree on this one, but I, I'm going to have to go with uh, Carl K. He's, uh, mm-hmm. he's having a, a bit of a rough go right now. He It's not confirmed, so we don't want to say it's confirmed, but according to him, he has caught the virus, and that's, that's what he refers to it as. Mm-hmm. Uh, he hasn't, according to him, has not uh, gotten sick enough and checked off enough boxes to where he qualifies to go to the hospital and get tested. But he also knows that this is the sickest he's ever been in a long time. And this is unlike any other sickness he's ever had. Yeah. And uh, due to his travels and his timeline, he thinks he puts it all together. And uh, and it's pretty certain that uh, he, he actually has it. But uh, he seems to be on the up, 
up and up. Like things are turning around for him, and he's in all of our thoughts. Obviously, a great guy, and he's just hoping he uh, starts to feel better soon. Yeah, absolutely. Um, that the 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 positive thing that I've heard is that whenever you are ketogenic, like Carl is, uh, the the anti inflammatory nature helps lessen the impact and help it, it help it clear. Uh, so hopefully that will continue to to be true for him, and and that that he. Uh, uh, as soon as he feels a need that he, he runs to get help if he needs it, because uh, we certainly want him to stay around. He is the keto, ketogenic world's most interesting man. We can't have him going away. <laughs> um, Very true. Yeah. Yeah, he just had to beat us to this one, too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. Um, so I am going to uh, shout out Craig Page. He hit his one year ketoversary and he, he's had quite the, the transformation. Um, uh, let's see. He doesn't look like he's given any any numbers here in his post uh, earlier today, but he shows a before and after picture and he's got that, you know, traditional dad bod in the swimsuit type picture on the one side and then the other side you can see the abs coming in nice and tight a, a good outline and and like he he's put in the work and he's he's definitely lost the weight and and i'm sure re, uh, reclaimed his uh his health along the way with that um it looks like he's uh you know giving an honorable mention to fellow member zach williams uh for a lot of information and and help and and uh, zach is a great resource in a lot of those things so i'm glad that they've been able to uh, work together and and see the success that he is so uh good on you craig so we do have a topic um we kind of been around it but we haven't zeroed in on it. it the the truth is that we're this social isolation thing, it's been hard on a lot of, a lot of us. Um, it, it, you know, some of it is staying at home. And so lots of opportunity to snack others of us, um, uh, we're having, uh, weird cravings because we're not getting, you know, the, the same interaction that we normally do to fill whatever the X, Y, Z need is that we have in that day. Um, let's uh let's kind of go around the horn and we'll pull pull yogi in on the conversation about uh, what are you know some of the things that that we would advise practically to deal with the the struggles that 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 a lot of guys are are having right now with staying on on trask and and being able to uh stay the course we kind of actually in in the uh gourmet episode that we just just aired earlier this week we kind of talked a little bit about this but uh more from a, a different p perspective and so let, let's kind of dig a little deeper jim how about you how about, let's start with you <laughs> i was gonna say who, who draws the first draw kind of thing here you know um i wanted to talk about this in particular because a lot of the guys in the group have shared um, some pretty significant challenges that challenges that they're experiencing that they're going through right now. Um, whether it be uh, financially, emotionally, uh, physically, whatever the case may be, but it's it's been tied in specifically to uh, COVID, coronavirus, whatever you want to call it, kind of thing. Um, it's it can be very intimidating to walk into your grocery store um, if you have had to wait a little bit to even get in because some of the stores in my community actually limited the number of people in the building. And so you, you, you don't have that freedom to just walk in and grab what you want off the shelf, take a moment to kind of search for the, the right avocado or the right, this or the right, that, um, instead you're going in and you're on a hunt almost. Mm -hmm. And Let's be honest, we all have those trigger things that we're going to see it on the shelf and think, oh, you know, if I get sick, man, that's my comfort food or that's what's going to make me feel good. That's what I'm going to want when I am feeling rotten and I'm laying on the couch or whatever the case. Or I need something that's going to keep my kids quiet um, because they're going to be home for the next umpteen weeks and they're doing schoolwork and they've got it's just there's so many different things that run through your mind. And so, I, I mean, guys have share, shared, you know, they've fallen off the wagon. They've struggled in the last week or two and whatnot. So um, I think one of the main things is just trying to stay as focused as possible 
And, you know, when you go in and you're finding what you find in the grocery store, get it. Don't, don't shop. Just go get what you need make the list. Get out as quickly as you can. Try not to be as tempted by what's down the sugar aisle, what's down the potato chip aisle, whatever the case may be. The other thing I would say, though, on the other side of the coin is you can do all that that you want, but sometimes you just say, screw it, here's what I need, and I'm doing this one time. I'm not advocating for it, but nobody in our group is going to call you out and say you're a failure, or you've messed up, and you can never get back on track because you b- bought a th- carton of ice cream and you split it among five people kind of thing. If you do it, it, we say it repeatedly, get on the next day, do what you can, get refocused, and that's why we're here to help. Berto? I'm supposed to follow that. <laughs> you, Chris is going to edit it out, and it's just going to be like, Jim, what do you think? Grocery sucks. Berto? <laughs> <laughs> I'll send you my payment, Chris, to keep it in the show. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, it's it's definitely trying times for everyone. I mean, everybody's having their own different anxieties. You know, like for me, it's a little different because like my other than going to the gym, which, which is bringing on a whole new level of stress and anxiety. Because because I, I, in case you haven't noticed, I'm an avid weightlifter, and and I've talked about it before. Where I I never realized up until now, because now we're what two weeks and with three days, this is my longest gym absence since like 2012, and I never realized how much the gym kept my demons at bay and like i still got mm. booze in the house and you know it ain't, it ain't a big deal but there there's just times where i'm like like i i could taste the whiskey in my mouth and i'm like oh that'd be so good right now <laughs> and I, I don't you know I'm, I'm able to not but those those are very strange feelings for me and so like i just you know the gym the gym was my my uh my addiction and it's not there anymore and that's a little stressful uh and again i have an essential job so my day to day other than the gym hasn't changed much, but now I got the added anxiety knowing, you know, there's a really high chance that I am going to catch this. And if it comes into my house, it's going to be because of me. And mm-hmm. so like that, that obviously weighs a little heavy. Uh, I also have an autoimmune disease. So for me, it's like at this time under the circumstances with the amount of stress and all the other anxiety stuff I got going on. I need all hands on deck and my immune system. I can't be thinking about going off plan and having my body freak out and compromise my immune system. It's just, it, it cannot be an option right now. So like, I'm obviously I'm not weightlifting. I, I, I'm, I really don't care what I weigh right now. I'm tracking my macros to make sure I eat enough just to try to preserve some muscle mass. I'm doing a little bit of jogging. I'm doing body weight stuff in the garage as much as I can. But my focus is, pretty much completely gone from the physique side of things. And it's all about eating as clean and as healthy as I can to give my immune system the best shot when this inevitable monster comes knocking at my door. And, uh, and, and that's my motivation to stay there. And I, like I said, in the group a couple of times, we're like, we're, it, we got a bunch of uncertainties and crazy stuff going on. If you can just rely on one thing and one thing that you don't got to worry about, one thing you don't got to stress about and, try to try to turn all that into just rely on the diet, you know, rely on your food, you know, make it as simple as possible. You know, if, if you, if you know, you're going to eat nothing but ground beef and cheese for the next two days, well then there's one big stressor off of your list, you know, worry about the other things that you got to worry about, you know, make the food, the, the foundation and the one thing that doesn't have to change so that everything else can, you know, take a little bit more of your attention. You don't got to be sidetracked about, Oh, I didn't lose any weight this week. And I, and don't believe me, I understand that's very important for a lot of people. But, you know, prioritize things. And I think everyone should really, really be prioritizing health. You know, we heard uh, all over the news that alcohol sales are through the roof. I get it. But now is just everybody's stuck at home. But man, now is not the time. Mm -hmm. It's not the time to be sitting at home, sipping on cocktails, you know, enjoying your quarantine. And, you know, you start to take things for granted. You get comfortable in your quarantine and things will slip little by little by little. But Mm -hmm. I mean, now is not the time. Uh, The best article I read is like, look, you're going to get this everybody's going to catch it. Assume everybody's going to catch it. The only thing you have is the benefit of knowing it's coming and you have time to prepare for it. Yeah. I think that's a, a good way to look at it because it, it, well, and let's, let's talk about numbers a little bit. Nobody wants to see deaths at all. So, you know, let, let's put that to the side and make that assumption first and foremost, but the percentages say more than likely, like way more than likely, if you are to catch it, 
unless you have an underlying health issue of some sort, you are going to survive it. It may be really, really sucky while you're living through it, but you will live through it. And so uh, that that assumption of, okay, you will get it, but it's going to be okay. Just be as ready as you can is a totally good thing to to assume. And so be ready and have your plan and, and whatnot. My wife and I have been uh, – trying to, to meal prep. And, and of course she is home all the time now. And which is, that's kind of a different thing. She's usually out and about running around from school to school. And uh, she's doing all her lessons in her office now. And, and that's been pretty good. Actually, uh, she's enjoying it. She gets a little more prep time instead of driving an hour to, to school district or, you know, that type of thing. And so it, there's, there's benefits to it, uh, Two. So look on the bright side as best as you can. Try to turn the negative into the positives. We've seen a few people uh, in the group actually comment on that very thing that maybe this is exactly what I needed. I needed the uh, the the push to focus down, simplify, cut out the distractions that I got from being going everywhere. Um, and so try to find the, the positive in the in the negative situation um as best as you can for for you and for for me that's actually you know one of my positives has been i've gotten to attend more kung fu classes because i'm not having to drive 20 or 30 minutes right after i get off of work to barely make it to the start of class or uh you know be uh you know or or not be able to record a podcast that night because I went to class. I can, you know, walk from my uh, living room into my office and be able to to record an episode, and it's no big deal. Uh, so I'm getting more physical activity, not less, uh, because mainly I've been just doing kung fu lately, um, and I find that I'm doing more and more kung fu around the house and in between times too, which has been fun. Uh, Please tell me there's video of you just like walking into the kitchen and doing a karate chop. <laughs> so because I need this. There's right not. Now. There, there's Come not. On. There's not video of that yet. Um, it, it, when I um, so it, it, one of the things that that they've instituted is that for the lower belts like myself, they are going to allow us to submit video for testing. So as long as it's not like edited down or anything, they're going to take that as our as our test. And so my wife actually did that today. She is now officially yellow belt along with me. Uh, so we're, awesome. we're back on the same level again. And uh, and so she um, so I have a little bit more material to, to learn, but I'll be moving into the next belt uh, hopefully, in, you know, before all of this uh, goes past. And so there will be video and I can share little bits and pieces. I can't show the whole form. That's kind of the the rule of, of that type of thing. But I'll. I'll I'll share a video or two of, of uh, some clips of, of what we're doing and, and whatnot. They're the two techniques that, that I'm primarily learning right now are uh, called tiger and uh, tiger and uh, the four doors. And they're both uh, full forms. And, and it's kind of my first like foray. Anyway, that has nothing to do with uh, COVID-19. So uh, but I'm being more active than less and using the time at home as best as I can. But like I said earlier, I'm just as busy, if not more so as ever, because I've got more technical things that I'm taking on um, as a part of all of this as well. Um, well, I want to throw in real quick mm -hmm. because this is, this has been me is that, so my gym has shut down. I don't have equipment or anything like that. And I know that that is an excuse. I, I totally get it and whatnot, but, Myself, and I, I know that there are others out there that you are going to work and you are doing everything that you can for your colleagues and whatnot, and you come home at 5, 6 o'clock in the evening or whatever time you get off work, and you're mentally mm -hmm. drained. Mm -hmm. You have just, you have, you've given everything that you can, you've been, you've done everything right and so on, and it's almost like when you have you get in that routine of I go to the gym four days a week or I do this and whatnot. When that gets shot, all of a sudden everything gets thrown off. And then you get in the cycle of, man, I, I failed. I should have done this. Well, screw it. That means I'm going to go get ice cream because that sounds good right now. And you get in that, in that rut. And we've all just got to remember it's, it's a temporary thing mm -hmm. and we shouldn't punish ourselves for trying to do everything that we can to do 
everything for ourselves right now. I mean, mm-hmm. it's, it's, we're all fighting something right now. So I was telling a coworker the other day, I feel like I am fighting the invisible man right now because I've mm-hmm. not seen this. I've not known anybody that's had this illness or anything. And I'm not saying that it doesn't exist or anything. I just, that's just how my brain works. I need to see something tangible or to know that it's really out there. And when it's, when you're not getting that experience, thankfully, it also means like, well, why can't I go do this? Why can't I go do that? And it's just, it's just, this is something that I, I is, it's going to be studied for years and years and years kind of thing in so many different ways. Mm -hmm. So. Agreed. Yeah, and just to piggyback off that really, really fast because we're we keep dragging this thing on, but but uh you know maybe we'll do a two stuff. part show and we'll just put him in part <laughs> <Seriously>. two. <Yeah. laughs> Eventually we'll get to Yogi at night. But real quick, like <laughs> um I mean a lot of guys are at home, you know, like and anxiety and stress do weird things. I've been sleeping a lot more than I've slept in a long time and I don't feel any more energized, I don't feel better for the sleep. But it's it's the stress and anxiety of the day, and you know, and if there's one thing you can do while you have time, and why if you're stuck at home, it might be like unusual. But man, try to get to bed an hour earlier. Try to wake up a half hour later. One of the healthiest things you could possibly do is sleep, and, and especially with stress and anxiety, I, I I can only assume that it does wonders for those things. And like like I just said a second ago, I'm sleeping more than I have in a long time, but I don't feel any more rested. So it, it's going somewhere. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Well, some of that's probably making up for all the lack of sleep that you, that you've had. Uh, yeah. Sleep. That'd be debt. great. Wouldn't it? <laughs> well, it, it, there is technically some science behind that, but it, it it's really, really hard to pay back. I'll say it that way. Uh, just like real debt. Um, so let's, <laughs> let's bring in Yogi as he mentioned sleep debt there. Uh, you know, Yogi, uh, welcome to the show. First of all, um, Thank you guys. we're kind of all in a weird mood today for some reason we're all talkative. Um, but that being said, uh, what, it's too much isolation. Yeah, I guess. Uh, what are your thoughts on, on all of this, your, your techniques, your, your strategies Whoa. that you're thinking about? I actually have less social isolation now than I did before the whole mess started. So previously I was locked in a truck, you know, where I could pretty much sprawl out and touch every wall in the truck. And it was just me and the dog. So social isolation is my wheelhouse, man. Okay. So how Um, do you deal? um, (laughs) Well, you know, you just got to keep yourself occupied mainly and uh, either through creative endeavors, through exercise. There's a lot of ways you can exercise at home. If you have Amazon Prime, there are a ton of workout videos on Amazon. There's a ton of free ones on YouTube. And you can get up and try something new that you haven't done before. If you want a heck of a workout, try the uh, – there's a couple people that do Capoeira um, coaching videos on, on – I think it's YouTube. And they show you the basics. And it's, it's a gnarly workout because everything comes out of a squat position. And it's a lot of coordination, a lot of rhythm like dance and martial arts put together. Um, Like you guys were saying, do everything you can to stay healthy so that if you do get infected, you can fight it off. Keep keep a good supply of of nutrition in that helps with the immune system, things like echinacea, vitamin C, elderberry. Um, And and, uh, a lot of people get into um, snacking because of the... uh, the boredom. And so instead of you know, sitting and dwelling in the boredom and thinking about food because you're not doing anything, you know, just try to fill that time. And we do like, we posted a little while back, a recipe to make a really potent lipo C so that you can, um, you can make this really strong stuff and help boost your immunity as well. Um, and then the, the other big thing is just your support. And you got a lot of people around you in the group that are all trying to do the same health goal. So utilize that, be online with the people who are positive and, and uh, are doing the similar goals that you are. So you can keep each other accountable and cheer each other on and maybe even invest more full time, set up online challenges between your buddies. Hey, I'm doing this workout video today, or I'm doing this, or I'm doing this many pushups and sit-ups and, and have challenges with one another. And it, it'll really help you get through everything and keep yourself occupied so you don't fall into a lot of bad habits. Yeah, very good. 
um, one of your outlets is that you like to draw in your, you call them doodles, but they're really, they're really good. good. <laughs> <laughs> quite good. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I, that's, I, I, I am a, a little ADD when it comes to hobbies. So I'll draw for a little bit and then I'll go do something else and I'll go do something else. But yeah, it's, it's for me, it's like meditation. Um, I'm sitting down, I'm focused on something. I have to kind of clear my head um, and just see what I come up with. So it's, it's, it's just one of those creative outlets and it doesn't have to be drawing, but you know, there's, there's online coaching to learn how to play an instrument. Mm-hmm. There's, you know, and if you're having a struggle getting supplies, that could be your creative outlet is trying to be creative on how you can refill your supply. List. Yeah. So yeah, absolutely. All really cool and very good uh, suggestions. So uh, we, we kind of, anytime that we pull the guest in on the topic, it seems a little backward, but uh, for those that don't know Yogi Parker, he's uh, now an ex truck driver. Um, yes. And uh, it's, it's, he has been a, an excellent uh, member of the ketogenic community for quite a long time. He is partner with our friend, Carrie Brown um, with, uh, with her endeavors on Facebook and, and everything that she's doing. And they're, they're, uh, they're kind of, helping each other out on, on all of that. And it's a, it's a great partnership in that regard. Um, so, uh, Yogi, let's, let's start at the beginning with you. We want to dig into your story, kind of how you came into all of this and kind of get to, to know you as a person, and then we'll kind of get into your health journey. So kind of go back as far as you'd like, and we'll, uh, we'll, we'll go from there. Uh, I've, I've kind of, I've struggled with my weight since probably middle school when I started having growth spurts um I was put down physically quite a lot because I grew very rapidly over a short period of time and I also tended to go horizontal before I went vertical and so I'd get real chubby then sprout up real chubby and then sprout up and then I just got real chubby um when I graduated high school I was about 600 pounds and it was uh i mean i i power lifted i did a lot of a lot of exercise um so i was a physical 600 pounds but i was still 600 pounds um i did end up losing a lot of weight when i went traveling after high school and went to a bunch of different countries and i attribute that to the fact that i wasn't eating when i was in other countries i wasn't eating as much processed food i was eating a lot of whole real foods, things that I found in the the jungle or uh, things that were served to me in the local villages. uh, And that helped me lose a lot of weight. But when I got back to the U.S., between stress from work and falling back in sedentary lifestyle and eating a bunch of the standard American diet, gained a bunch of weight back. Lost it again, some of it again when I went vegan, bounced back, got into pro wrestling, lost a bunch, and then I got hit by a car. And, uh, that put me down for a couple of years. And when I was able to start moving around again, I ended up truck driving and gaining a bunch of weight. Uh, there's a ball headed dude on, uh, this show called destination or it's a show called let's truck. And he does an episode called destination health on every Wednesday. And he started talking about ketogenic diet. And I thought it was a load of malarkey, honestly. Um, it didn't fit with anything I was ever taught about nutrition growing up through sports uh through powerlifting and one of the things he did start talking about was its effect on brain health and that got me interested because i had started studying about ct uh cte which is the traumatic uh brain coming from concussions and um so I got real interested in the ketogenic diet for brain health and I started studying it. So I kind of went in full bore and went into a very high fat ketogenic diet. And I ended up going from about 480 pounds down to about, or actually it was about 550 pounds when I started down to about 330. Yeah. So, and, um, 
that was a slow process because I, I was never really focused on the weight loss. I was focused on the brain health. And so my macro ratios were often extremely high fat. Um, but I was experiencing symptoms like uh, uncontrolled emotions, depressions, chronic fatigue. My brain literally felt like I was underwater. I, I was a scuba diver for a long time, and I literally felt like I had that pressure of, of the water of being down in depth and in atmosphere um, around on my head. And I would cr- constantly get tired, and all those symptoms went away. And a lot of the pain that I was experiencing in my body for a long time subsided. Um, Still have some, but not nearly as bad as it used to be. And it just hooked me. I was sold. No pain, brain function. And then weight loss is a cool side effect. I'm, I'm there, man. It's also the most sustainable diet I've been on. So are you are you uh, putting your vote in for the most interesting man between pro wrestling, world traveling, powerlifting, six hundred pounds, scuba diver, truck driver? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> well, I was you're giving Carl He's ready to run for his money here. Holy cow! <laughs> exactly. Uh, I don't know. I I never really considered any of that like that impressive. I just kind of <laughs> fell into stuff as I was going around. I'm like the most accidental interesting because <laughs> a lot of the stuff I did, it was like, hey, you want to do this? Okay. Now, just out I of mean, curiosity, dabble in the pro wrestling. Just give us a very quick yeah. rundown of how that started and how that went. Well, I was, uh, I, I, most of my life I worked nonprofits, but I didn't make a lot of money. So being my size, one of the moonlighting gigs I kept picked up all the time was security. And, uh, I happen to have kind of a baby face going on. And so I'd go up and tell people, Hey man, it's time to go. And they're like, Oh, we're going to fight. Don't want to fight. It's just time to go. And we'd end up in a fight. And so I grew dreadlocks out, carved up a beard, made it all designed, made myself look like a total wild man. And then I'd walk up to people and be like, Hey man, it's time to go. And they'd be looking at me doing math in their head and going, okay, I'll see you next weekend. And the fight stopped. (laughs) And we were dealing with an incident with some bikers one night. And after the incident was over, this guy approached me and his name was Rick Bass His is Rick Bassman. And he's like, Hey man, I got this gym nearby and we do mixed martial arts and stuff. You got to come over and try out. And I was like, hell no. And he said, well, we also do pro wrestling. Well, you should come over. And I, was, I, I wasn't into it. So he finally convinced me to come over and try it. And I had a lot of fun with it. It turns out this is the same guy that trained Sting, Ultimate Warrior, John Cena, Samoa Joe, The Miz. Like the, the, the guy's bona fides are a mile long. And he had me in front of the WWE and like two weeks later after I started up at his gym and they were talking to me uh, like three weeks into it. I did a couple of dark matches with the WWE, one with a uh, uh, TNA, which is now a defunct company, the impact. And um, not too long after that, I was going to Europe and going around doing uh, uh, side shows and or not side shows, but the um, local shows and things like that. Um, went out to Japan, did a few shows, and uh, was contacted by the WWE, and they said they wanted to sign me and send me to development to uh, Florida, and I was all excited, and the day my wellness packet arrived and my contract arrived and I was about to call Rick, uh, some dude rear-ended me uh, about 60 miles per hour, stop and go, and I damaged my my shoulder and my neck and everything and took me right out. And I was already old for being a rookie in pro wrestling. So there was not really much of a chance for me to return. Wow. But, but, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's insane. Yeah. It was, a, it was a bit of a roller coaster. It was a lot of fun. I got to meet a lot of cool people. Some people, not so much, but I, it was, it was it was really a lot of fun, and I enjoyed making people laugh, and I, a lot of the stuff, I would always be the bad guy, but we'd almost always try to put some sort of comedy spin on how I'd beat or something like that, and uh, making people laugh. Even one of the characters I played, they the, one of the first characters they had me play out in Europe, they wanted me to be like the manager for these two hip-hop guys out of Brooklyn, and they're like, we got to think up a good pro wrestling manager name. And I was like, oh, there's Suge Knight, so I'll be Suge Light. 
And they'd put me in like gold chains and a suit and the whole bit. And I'd come out and act like this. And I, and the funny thing is, is I'm not very familiar with hip hop. I listen to blues and stuff like that. Uh, old, really old stuff. And so I had to take on this whole hip hop persona and uh, be pretty fly for a white guy kind of thing as I came out. And it was just, it, people laughed harder at me. And I think, ever did so That's i'm funny. gonna go on mute for a moment and go look up youtube and see if i can find uh <laughs> there <laughs> there actually isn't believe it or not um i never filmed my because i didn't have i like i said uh we, we were talking before the cast i didn't have technology when i was a kid so i didn't have video cameras and stuff so i just go up and do my thing the dark matches i did for uh wwe were no cameras and then when i went overseas there is footage out there but the company that has the footage, it was their proprietary footage, and they went out of business. And so, there <laughs> so was close, one... you were so close. <laughs> yeah, it, it was all like a quick whirlwind. It was only like, it, it, like I, I was only doing it for like two or three years, and that was most guys have been doing it for ten years before they get looked at by the WWE, or they had to be uh, collegiate, you know, wrestler or something something in there and i i just was dumb luck of the draw i was basically recruited I had nothing i'd planned to do nothing i was seeking out in life it was just like hey you want to try this okay yeah. <laughs> well you, you wrote it man you had nothing to lose and you took advantage so so i mean yeah let's, i did let's, let's look it at was this a lot side. of fun it was a lot of fun but there was there's a lot of things that happened like that to me so it's funny like half the things i've done in life people are just like hey you want to try this okay and then there I was. <laughs> hey, you want to go to the Philippines? Yeah, okay. If you, you were doing yes theory before there was a yes theory. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. So um, you you kind of hinted towards some of the, the things that you've been seeing correcting, but let's dive deeper into uh, what you've seen response-wise in your body since discovering and getting into keto on on or as as deep of level as we can so you've seen weight loss you've seen health improvement kind of go into all of that so uh the first thing that i noticed is uh, when i was started driving the truck i was always tired i was even before i started driving the truck i was a guy that would take like several naps a day i would i would have a bunch of energy and then i would just like my whole body would just shut down and i never had that sustainable energy that would last for a long time and when i started keto one of the first things i noticed is i didn't have to take naps throughout the day after a while and i didn't have the crashes i started i i did the typical you know fatty joe bulletproof coffee line of thing and usually when you have coffee you, you get that up for a little bit and then you get that crash and it did the crash stopped happening for me I stopped needing the naps. The, the only time I needed naps is when my sleep was disrupted because of the job. Um, so that was one of the first things I noticed. And then I started noticing that uh, because I listened to a lot of audio books as I drove and podcasts, I noticed I was starting to retain information a lot better than what I used to be able to do uh, not too long ago I, uh, before I started. And I I wasn't having the short term memory loss uh, that I was previously having, where people would have to tell me something over and over before I'd remember it. And then I did notice too that I while I was driving the truck, I had fallen into uh, quite an explosive kind of up and down personality, deep depressions, and then kind of crazy ups for a minute and then back into a deep i hate the world uh angry at everything depression and i noticed my emotions started to, to stable out uh and so that was one of the first things that i noticed and it, it actually took months before i noticed any weight loss um and one morning too i woke up and most mornings i would wake up and i could barely crawl out of bed because my back hurt so bad or my legs would hurt so bad and one morning i woke up and i was getting ready to pull myself up and i was just like well that wait a minute i lifted my arm it didn't hurt i i kind of sat up in the bed like a sit up style it didn't hurt my back didn't hurt my knees didn't hurt and i was like that 
that's interesting. And the only thing I contributed to, because it was the only thing that was different, was the fact that I had cut grains and sugars out of my life. And uh, increased things like omega-3s and had a lot of MCT oil and, and brain-healthy oils and increased the, uh, the omega-3s from, from eating a lot of sardines and canned, canned seafood and things like that on the truck. So I was just like, you know what? something's happening, something's working. And I just started really trying to dive deep into the research and, and see what the studies were actually saying on it. And it just became more and more compelling until I was pretty much hooked nasty on the keto lifestyle. So Yogi, talking about that transition of the food, how easy or how difficult was it for you to go from the processed stuff and everything to a keto way of eating? It, the transition was not easy uh, for me. I, I had what people would call keto flu, but I also had a tough time digesting the fats. And one of the books I read that actually really helped me out transitioning, it's not a keto book, but it's called Eat the Yolks by Liz Wolf, um, started talking about some of the digestive issues you can have when you're transitioning back to fat and how you can fix your digestion. And in order to, for me to be able to process all the fat that I was eating, I had to fix the way my body digested the fat. So I actually started incorporating apple cider vinegar tonics before each meal and before I went to bed to control blood sugar and to raise the acid levels in my stomach so I could break down the fats. I incorporated a lot of uh, bitter foods like arugula um, when I could get clean bitters to put in my water to make my water taste different, like the, like what you would use for cocktails, I would get the bitters and put them in my water because they help with digestion and they help the, the alkaline on the other side of the digestion system. When you're, when, when the body processes, the acid and goes into the, 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 the lower intestines that you have to have an alkaline there to neutralize the acid. And I had to learn all those things in order for me to, to maximize my keto diet. So I had to incorporate things that people on keto would obviously go, ah, that's not keto, but I incorporated beets to help with the digestion in the gallbladder and loosening up bile in my system because I couldn't get supplements like uh, good quality ox bile or, or anything like that while I was on the road. I didn't go home that often, so it was very difficult for me to get supplements. Everything I did, I had to really try to, to use food to fix. And a small amount, mainly fermented beets is what I would do because most of the sugars were, were taken out, helped my digestion. And then after a while, I was able to tolerate a lot more fat content without the gastric distress that I had when I initially started. Um, once that transition went in and I was able to fix a lot of the problems that I had with the digestive system, another thing I did was include a lot of collagen in my diet as much as I could. I was making homemade bone broth on the truck. Um, I was, uh, using the bone marrow, eating the gristle and everything I could to get collagen in. And whenever I could get a good quality collagen supplement. So I was kind of going nuts with the collagen, trying to heal my stomach up enough to be able to handle because I had been on a low fat diet, low calorie diet for such a long time. My body just couldn't process the higher fat. And it, it was a, it was a, it was a tough transition. And then um, I had to really work on my electrolytes. And that was another big key. And I became a huge fan of the proper magnesium supplements, uh, as well as a as good quality electrolytes or making my own electrolyte drinks in there. Because the other thing I found with that is I've been prone to muscle cramping my entire life, even before keto. And it just got worse on keto. Uh, until I incorporated those electrolytes and plenty of water and cutting out a lot of the flavored drinks. Oh. So in making your own electrolyte drink, what, um, what did you use for that? I, I've, I've seen the, uh, the recipe for, and I actually have the ingredients. I just have never tried actually making it yeah. for the well, element. Uh, and, and so what, what are, what's your, your mix? One, I try to I try to stay with the natural foods as much as possible. So one of the things that I would use is coconut water. And a lot of people will scream, well, that's not keto. It's too much sugar. 
but I would mix that coconut water with like a gallon of regular water. So the sugar was fairly diluted when you're drinking it over the time. So it's not going to really spike your, your blood sugar unless you're super sensitive to it. So I would use some coconut water for the nutrition out of there. I would use uh, for extra potassium, I would either use crema tartar or uh, new salt or no salt, which is a, a, a potassium uh, salt uh, substitute that you can find at Walmart's a lot of times or online. Um, I would use some sort of sea salt. I like Redmond's a lot. So I would get a lot of Redmond's whenever I could, or I would get a Himalayan pink salt or a Celtic gray salt, and I would rotate them. Sometimes when I wanted to clean out some of the heavy metals and stuff that built up in my system and some of the toxicity, I might use some Hawaiian black salt because there's basically charcoal inside of it. So it helps filter things out. Um, so that would be the sodium plus some micro minerals there. And then the magnesium, finding a high quality magnesium when I was on the road was always the challenge. Um, if I could hit up Instacart and have something delivered, or if it was close enough that I could walk in a short amount of time to go to like a natural grocers or sprouts, they often had some sort of um, um, magnesium um supplement there that would work good and I, I i would always try to avoid the magnesiums that would cause a lot of the uh, disaster pants like the uh cheap magnesium like the magnesium oxide or uh, uh something like that so i would get sometimes the powdered magnesium whenever i could um, but the the preferred magnesium for me was the magnesium glyconate or malinate or three and eight whenever I could get it or the magnesium um I'm trying to think of the name of it right now but the the there it's a uh it's a magnesium where they've actually bombarded it with uh sonic waves to actually break down the molecules to a smaller size to make it higher more bioavailable and I can't think of the name of it right now um so that would be the prime thing sometimes I would add a little bit of borax for some of the other nutrients that were in there but it was only like a really small amount yeah, some people would think that that was crazy to to add essentially bleach for a cleaning product to. Well, it's it's not it's, it's not, not the though. same kind of borax that oh, people okay. are thinking about. I I would actually get um because they 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 mine a, the borax and so you get the little bit of the rock and put it in there and it actually has um some selenium and some other things that are um in very small dosages good for your metabolic response, thyroid response, and things like that. And you figured all this out on a truck. Yeah. Well, when you're on a truck driving 13 hours a day, you have a lot of time on your hands uh, staring at open highways. So you can fill that time of listening to junk radio or music, which I do love music, or you can listen to audio books. And if you look at my Audible playlist, man, it's it's ton of health books on there. And I just... I basically became obsessed and I even listen to things that are not keto to hear what they have to say. And I weigh what works and what does, because I've tried just about every diet plan you can think of. And, and so by now I know what works for me and what doesn't. And keto is by far the most sustainable um, way to go for me. That is easy to, to maintain the lifestyle and it has worked the best for me. Some people might be able to go vegan or vegetarian or whatever. It did not work for me at all. I was miserable. My body was not happy with me at all. And being keto and, and being heart, heavier on carnivore, um, but including some vegetables uh, in the rotation is really what made the biggest benefit for me. Oh, absolutely. High fat. And uh, speaking of figuring this out in a truck, you have posted some of the most epic meals I've ever seen. And it never dawned on me. After, I'm looking at these pictures like, man, these things are awesome. But I never put like put it together. It took me a while to and like, oh, wait, like you're doing these all while you're working, while you're driving. So what uh, was your uh, what was your yeah. setup? I mean, well, like how, how do you manage to pull off? And not only that, but you're plating them and making them look all pretty. And like, what, what was what's your <laughs> truck setup? Or how did you like, how did all that come to be? <laughs> um, so. I, I I learned how to cook camping and I was always we go out surf trips and things like that or dive trips or go backpacking somewhere. 
I was always the camp chef. So I figured out how to jury rig and, and, and work with minimal stuff kind of early on. So I just adapted everything over to the truck. And in the truck, initially, I had a, like a crock pot, a trucker's lunchbox oven, but things changed and progressed as I, I trucked for over the years. And I added more things, took some stuff out, ended up with a few different camp stoves and uh, a Ninja Foodie. Um, I had a George Foreman Evolve grill, which you can do a bunch of stuff with because it has interchangeable plates. Anything that was a multitasker was in my wheelhouse and that's what I did. And, uh, I had an Instapot for a while. And one of the things I did with that is I turned it into a smoker on the truck. Um, so I actually was able to smoke meat on the truck a couple of times. It was kind of labor intensive, but with the, a lot of the stuff that could slow cook while I was driving, I could put just prep the ingredients. So I had them all ready and it would be just dump and go and let it cook while I was driving. And some of the other stuff was just quick single pan single pot things where i would still pre-pep put everything in the fridge till i was ready to cook and then i was able just to kind of assemble and make the dishes that i needed to do and i would do some on skillets when i had time off uh because trucking's got weird rules that you have to follow and sometimes you have to take 30 um 34 hour resets and when i had the time off i would go to the store and and meal prep and sometimes even end up selling meals at the terminal. If I was at the trucking terminal and guys were tired of pizza and Chinese food, because that's all that would <laughs> deliver. And they'd see me cooking inside the terminal with all my stuff set up, like, you know, Instapot over here, Crock-Pot over here, <laughs> the, you know, like stuff all around the terminal lounge where the drivers are and they're all sitting there smelling what I'm cooking. And then guys are getting like crappy Domino's pizza and stuff delivered to them. And they're like, uh, can I buy a plate of yours for eight bucks, 10 bucks, whatever. So I usually, I ended up usually feeding half the people at the terminal, uh, in the lounge, whoever was there too, and ended up having to make several runs to the store before I had enough food to take me with me on the road. <laughs> so, so I, I, I want to ask about that and this kind of gets into the weeds, but is there like a brotherhood of the truckers kind of thing? I mean, you know, we got uh, yeah. club and we're all, yeah you know, getting along and everything there, is there kind of a similar thing on the road? Yeah. As a matter of fact, online on the road, I mean, there's, it's, it's kind of the best way I can equate to it is, is kind of like the military. Um, you'll have like big trucking companies that everybody hates, but they'll still back up a driver regardless. Um, much kind of like the Navy hates the Marines and the Navy, Marines hate the Navy, but yet if somebody's backs to the wall, each side will jump in to help the other one out type thing. Uh -huh. But in general, we all, I mean, you, you have your outliers that are, you know, just complete tool guys who are complete tools, just like anywhere else. But in general, when we're out and about, we know that if something goes wrong and we're stranded, we're, in a bad situation so we look out for one another so that we can all keep keep going and there's a few people that don't but for the majority of it you know if you're broke down it's not uncommon for another driver to pull up and ask if you're okay if you know if you need some more coolant or if you need this and help you out and get you going as a matter of fact one of the guys i met on uh facebook through the destination health page alan day spa he's a driver too and he he's now joined with the keto man's club too. And there's a few other drivers on the keto man's club as well. So we, we, we've got a small kind of driver community in the keto man's club. Nice. And, yeah. I tell you so what, it, we're going to have to form these little like subgroups, kind of like on Reddit <laughs> or whatever, because we've got all the Texans that are in the keto man's club. Now we've got, <laughs> you, and I, I, there's another pastor who joined just tonight in the group. So we've got a number of religious figures. Now we've got the trucker group. So, <laughs> uh, Hey, whatever works. I I've been thinking for a little while, we might benefit from a discord group so that we could branch off little subgroups for, for subtopics and things like that. Something, you know, to think about. Could that be a teaser of something to come, Chris? Well, mm. You know, mm. maybe. Mm. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you know, it's it's everybody's got to have a place to belong. So some people you identify with the job that you do, and 
that's kind of the community that you fit in with for a while. Yeah, absolutely. I think this, this, the, the brotherhood of truckers is, is a good example of how men, when, and there's probably plenty of women in that, that yeah, community. There, as there's well. actually a growing amount of, it's still primarily a, a man's uh, dominated field, but there's a lot of women that are involved. And I mean, when you're, when you're the driver, you're a driver, you're not, you're not man, woman, you're not Indian, you're not African, you're not American, you're not, you're driver. Mm -hmm. That's it. You're driver. So you're always looking out for the other drivers out there. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, that, that community is a, a very good thing. And it, it's, it's one of the, the things that we're all being highlighted right now. We, we know now how important it is to have community amongst ourselves to, to be able to connect with other people, um, uh, probably in a way that, that we haven't known in a long time because we took it, it took for granted the communities that were all around us work or, um, social or whatever it was that we had before this current era that we're in with COVID. Um, well, you know, when things are moving fast and everybody's on the go, trying to make ends meet, trying to pay them bills mm -hmm. and stuff, the community can get slid by the wayside. You, people forget about things. And now that everything's slowed down and people have time for introspection and they have time to look around what's out in them and see what's important, that community's coming back up and hopefully it'll stay there. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Agreed. Absolutely agree. So uh, let's, you know, kind of dive in a little bit uh, into um, your favorite resources. Obviously, you, you already mentioned you've got a million and one. Your your Audible library has to rival mine. And that's saying something because I've got like 250 books in there. And that doesn't include the Bible. <laughs> <laughs> so tell us uh, what some of your favorite resources that you've uh, that you've found and uh, what what. What those might be so that, that those listening, whether they be advanced or beginners, uh, can really dive in. Well, for beginners, I always recommend, you know, one of the easiest places to start was pretty much the like Keto Clarity by Jimmy Moore. Um, Eat the Yolks, as I mentioned before, by Liz Wolf is a really good place to understand what healthy fats are, um, why whole foods are, are better than the processed stuff. I really like uh, Deep Nutrition by Catherine Shanahan. Um, I I like the Nourishing Tradition series, which is kind of a cookbook, ancient health book series. There, there's a few of them in the series, um, but they'll teach you how to make bone broth, different ways, different kind of ancient foods. Um, I enjoy. There's a book called um, The Secret Life of Fat by Sylvia Terra which is a really good book to read if you need to biohack your body and your, your keto plan, because it really discusses in depth of why the different reasons why people may hold more fat than others, everything from viral infections, uh, genetics to um, family history, um, the 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 type of fat you contain in your body whether or not you have enough brown fat or white fat it also talks about how fat functions in the body uh you know fat is much like a tumor it produces similar enzyme uh or, or catalyst catalytic enzymes in it to create arterial growth into the fat cells to keep it growing um so it's really a good way to understand what the fat is what it does why you might gain it that's a fantastic resource it's one i've gone to a couple of times um uh not it's not on audible but this is probably one of the most comprehensive keto books i've read which is the ketogenic bible mm -hmm. and it's it's a tome of a book and it can be a bit of a dry read but the good thing about it is you can pick it up and pretty much start in any chapter you want because it, you know, part of it's the history of a ketogenic diet, then how it works and the science. And then it gets into the nuts and bolts of actually what the ketogenic diet is and different methods. And they could probably update it for things like carnivore. Um, there, I do enjoy some of the books by Mark Hyman, although I don't follow everything that the guy does because some of the things that he preaches have definitely not worked on me. 
but he does seem to be open about other uh, methods to get to health that there's not just one single path of mm -hmm. the things that he generally pushes out, but he is on for whole real foods. And that's, I do use things on the truck, like keto chow and stuff like that. But uh, I, whenever I can do whole real foods, that's my preference um, as, as nutrient dense as I can possibly get. Um, I, uh, man, uh, Nina Teichel's Gary Taubes, you know, pretty much all the rock stars, of the keto community. Um, I, uh, I have the, um, nutrition and physical degeneration book that I'm reading. That's a physical copy. Uh, dream, re I got a book on adrenal fatigue that I got to go back over and reread because I kind of speed read for, through it the first time. Mm -hmm. Um, that I really enjoyed. Uh, there's several books on sleep that I love, uh, including Sean Stevenson's The uh, Sleep Smarter. And the, there's another book called Why We Sleep. There's the book called Salt. There's uh, mag the, the Magnesium Cure, The Salt Fix, The Magnesium Cure. So you name it, there I got books on it. Right now I got stuff on microbiology and uh, and, and uh, evolution and all kinds of other stuff. So now I, I don't remember, are you setting for your NTP right now? Um, I'm going to be doing both the primal health coach and the NTP. And I'm probably going to start with the primal health coach because I can get through it a little bit faster, mm -hmm. but yeah, I'm studying for all that stuff. I pretty much have almost all the required leading reading lists for the nutritional therapy association. Um, so I'm actually studying for that, but I'm going to start off with the primal health coach and I'm considering doing a few other things as well. What, like what? Um, well, <laughs> I mean, let's just, let's just lay it all out here, Yogi. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I'm, I, I also am looking at some programs to be certified on the ketogenics for ketogenic health coach. Cause that's our primary goal. But we, I really am a big fan of, of not just the diet helping your lifestyle, but your whole health lifestyle. So I'm trying to figure out some other programs to, to incorporate coaching for whole health. And um, that includes financial, spiritual, because your, your financial stress can throw off your diet, can throw off stress, can you know, make you your lack of sleep can you. So I'm trying to study as many fields as I can, so I can provide the most help as possible. And uh, so uh, one of the other ones I was looking at is the integrative uh, nutrition uh, association for some programs. And I was, I was um, looking for, and it's probably going to end up being more of a self-study thing, but I was looking for more study for uh, studying sleep, stress, um, I might get into uh, looking at um, how to become a, a person to help with guided meditation and um, teach stress relieving exercises and things like that as well. So I'm going to throw you a little bit of a curveball here, but since you've done all this research, there have been guys that have asked in the group um, and in different spots over time that keto hasn't worked for them. For whatever reason, they aren't feeling like, and, and it's not a, I've done one day of cheese and, and bacon and I should have lost 55 pounds. It's not that it's, I mean, they've, they put the effort into it for a while. Have you ever experienced that in, in your research and whatnot and why oh, yeah. that can happen and what, I mean, I obviously you talked about how stress can impact it and all these other things, but it, it, what, what can people do if they feel like they've, they're following the macros, they're following the right plan but they're not seeing what they want to see well there there can be you could write a book on the reason why people stall there's a biodiversity across the board and there could be any number of reasons that a person isn't seeing results from a ketogenic diet and the first thing that you got to keep in your head is that a ketogenic diet is not a cure-all there's other aspects of your life that also affect weight gain and weight loss um sleep stress, uh, the homeostasis of your body. The, some people respond to calorie deficits. Some people don't respond to higher caloric intake. And um, it's, it's, it's a lot of playing around to figure out what works for you. 
some people respond to higher fat content. Some people higher respond to higher protein content. My advice is always to follow the ketogenic guidelines, the, the basic guidelines of the 70% fat, um, 20% protein, and 10% uh, carbohydrate for at least a given amount of time and see your results so you get comfortable there. And then once you've got the basics down, then start playing with and seeing how you how you respond. A really common reason that people don't lose weight on the ketogenic diet is they are incorporating foods that cause inflammation in their bodies. And they don't know it because they're so accustomed to the inflammation. They're so accustomed to the crappy feeling that the, the food gives them. They don't realize it and they won't realize it until they cut that food out and then try to eat it later on. And it makes them. So one thing I do recommend to people is looking at doing an elimination diet for a while and cutting things out, allowing your body to heal. And if you do an elimination diet, do it under guidance of a healthcare professional so that you don't end up screwing up and doing something wrong and hurting yourself. Um, but eliminate those common inflammatory foods and then slowly bring them back in and see how you respond to them. And you might actually get more weight loss results once you figure out something. Um, there's people on the ketogenic diet often, and myself included, include a lot of dairy. Dairy can be a block to fat loss for a lot of people because it's one of the common things that people react to as far as food. Dairy often has a lot of hidden sugars inside of it that can um, mess with people's insulin responses. And one of the most common things for people not to lose weight is the stress. And when they're not seeing the results right away, they even compound the stress because they're stressing about not seeing the results or not seeing where they think they should be at this given amount of time. And so learning how to manage your stress, because when, you, when you're constantly in a fight or flight syndrome, that you're, you're firing up that hormone cortisol and the cortisol is stimulating the insulin and the insulin is, is driving sugar storage into the fat cells because you're under stress, but you're not running from anything. So you're still sitting there, but you're just under stress. So it starts throwing extra sugar in your fat cells, dropping your blood sugar, making you want to eat more, giving you sugar cravings, firing up the, the ghrelin response and the leptin response. And so learning how to deal with stress and, and learning how to either eliminate it or, or, develop coping mechanisms to, to deal with it. And some people live in such a stressful state, they don't even realize how stressed out they are because it's, it's their <laughs> norm. It, that's where they live. That's their wheelhouse. And trying to get somebody to de-stress in that state is actually can be pretty challenging and they get more stressed out about trying to de-stress. Yeah, we're definitely <laughs> seeing, we're definitely seeing, I would say we're definitely seeing that now with the aspect of social media and, Everybody and you know everybody's a is a professional and everybody's a doctor when it comes to this this virus that's going around and I oh, would yeah. definitely say that there's definitely an overconsumption that's causing stress that's causing issues for a lot of people you know keto or not but, I'm seeing it across the board just family members and friends and yeah and, and with everything with all this information on on the internet one of the things that you really have to be good at it is knowing how to curate proper information and, and looking at sources and things where it comes from and um whether you're right or left i really don't care but if you're getting your information from politicians you better double check that because they have a long history of not putting out the most accurate information on the planet. So you really want to seek the actual real medical professionals and the people who are studying this virus. So check your sources so that you don't fall into, you know, somebody telling you that if you put a hair dryer up your nose for yeah. 60 seconds, you can kill the virus and think that's a thing. Yeah, that's good. Good advice for sure. Vet your sources. And that that's with everything. That's not just with the COVID stuff. Um, so let's, uh, <laughs> we've been going for almost 90 minutes now from the time that I started recording, which was about 10 minutes before we actually started the show. Uh, so with that said, um, what, uh, so you, you obviously are putting yourself into a position where you're going to be able to start 
coaching and and try to pour into other people. You're already doing that in, in the Facebook groups uh, that, that you're involved in, which is all of them, uh, pretty much. <laughs> uh, you you are, are you, there's been uh, multiple other people in the admin group uh, for Keto Man's Club that is like, Yogi just needs to write for us and, and just, <laughs> just, and he, you were already doing it. So it's like, okay, just do it. Just keep doing what you're doing. You're doing amazing uh, jobs and the, the, the long posts to, to, to give in uh, deep insight into different topics that you've been studying. And so very much uh, yeah. appreciate all of that, that you're doing. So uh, you kind of have alluded to what's in the future and what, what's kind of coming up. How can people, follow that journey and learn more about what those opportunities might be for them. Um, the biggest thing is if you want to follow along with what we're doing, you could join the, uh, the Carrie Brown's uh, blog page. And um, that's at uh, the real, uh, hold on a second. Let me make sure I get the right email address because like I said, before the podcast, I'm half Amish and I always forget stuff. So I want to make sure I get it's carriebrown.com and it's the real Carrie Brown recipes adventures. And that's, uh, we've actually been teamed up for kind of unofficially for a little while now. She's been publishing some of my recipes and stuff on the blog post, but we're going to be announcing things there. If they want to be a Patreon supporter, they can go to patreon slash carriebrown.com. Uh, come and they can become a, and they can get the uh, they can get into uh, the early release stuff and all the other special things that we do for our space our, our patreon groups including a special facebook page um, there is also the carrie brown yogi parker face facebook page and um, the keto kitchen with carrie brown and yogi parker uh, facebook group that you can get in and uh, we release a lot of things that we're doing there, get access. There's a bunch of free recipes on there. Carrie's got um, a ton of uh, uh, cooking videos on YouTube. We just started doing a bunch of stuff on YouTube. We're just starting to release some of it, but we're getting stuff recorded. I'm trying to teach myself how to use final cut so I can record everything. And um, the YouTube channel is the real Carrie Brown. And it uh, that will have all the new videos, including where um, I've just started doing keto one on one courses, which will end up on the channel. There's there's cooking videos. We're doing product reviews um, and we got a few other things that we're planning up putting up there. Um, we will be doing some um, cooking master classes through the carrybrown.com to teach people how to cook. And we are planning on publishing a bunch of cookbooks and, and a uh, lot of other things. Yep. Well, Yogi, you, where, where in the world are you located? Just out of curiosity. Where's home? Well, I tell people I'm chronically in the state of confusion. Um <laughs> <laughs> uh, that Amish upbringing that you had. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, but, uh, I, I, up until recently I was in, uh, my, my, Technically, main base of operations was California uh, in the San Diego area, but I have just relocated to Connecticut. Ooh. How far mm -hmm. are you from Gorming? I have no idea. Probably I not. really don't know my way around Connecticut. I've only been here for a couple <laughs> of weeks. Yeah, yeah. So I know there's the woods behind the house. <laughs> I got that. Well, and you've so, not really been allowed to uh, go exploring or anything. Fair point. Not well. We've been walking around a bit, but you know, you only get so far. So, well, yeah, a few hundred meters from the house is not exploring. Yeah. So, but we we pretty much where we're at in Connecticut, we uh, we're not that far away from the New London area, but we're kind of in the country area, and uh, the the uh, where we're at, we're kind of in a bubble we're 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 nearby clinton and uh we're kind of in a bubble so like all the stuff that we see happening on the news and and facebook and stuff with the shelves being cleared out and the fights at the stores we're really not experiencing like there there's some sold out stuff but nobody's really going nuts uh people are fairly calm that we go we're able to get 
TP and meat and, mm-hmm. you know, so we're, we've, we've been pretty good. And then we have all the local farms near us. So if we need to get meat or eggs or even locally made cheeses and stuff, it's all here. So we yeah. just like, we're watching the whole world go bonkers and we're like, wow. So, like I said, I was, I was more socially isolated before COVID-19 <laughs> and now I'm like, I, I've got more freedom than I did before. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. So that's all of the ways that, that people can connect with you. You threw in your Instagram in there. I'm sh- I, I'm sure. I, I think I missed it. I, I think I have an Instagram. I don't know. I okay. don't really use Instagram. <laughs> um, I think I've so, seen it around there somewhere and it, we'll, yeah, we'll put it in oh, the link. So I'll, I'll put it in the, the show notes. Hold on. It's okay. the, it's the real Carrie. Well, wait a minute. The real Carrie Brown. And. carry on tripping uh on instagram so and i i think i have an instagram out there somewhere i signed up i may have signed up for it once and then completely forgot about it um but yeah if they want to message me through facebook i i try to respond to any message i get through facebook as long as people ain't yelling at me and uh you know for a bad reason and uh they can get in contact with me through Carrie Brown's uh, website because I have an email up on there. So if they want to shoot me a message through that, they can. Um, but I, I, I have to go back now, apparently for what we're doing, I have to be more part of the wider social media groups. And so I have to learn how to use Instagram and Twitter and <laughs> all that stuff now. So yeah. I'm just like, okay. So I'm trying to learn Facebook right now. I'm trying not to confuse myself by going on too much stuff. That's probably better if, as you, as you're, you're, I, I was one of those early adopters. I was probably one of the first, you know, couple hundred thousand on Twitter and yada, yada, yada. And, and yeah, it, it's, uh, it's all that clickety clackety black magic that I just don't understand. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it is a lot of black magic there sure um okay well let's go around the horn real quickly and review uh he, and and we're all in the group so we can say that that we're all in the group you can reach out to us uh, tag us whatever uh in in either the beginners or the uh, main group and uh you'll see yogi's posts on there regularly um as he's uh, very good about sharing uh so let's start with jim jim what are the alternate ways that people can get in contact with you uh, track me down on Instagram at Jim Inman Jr. Mm-hmm. And Berto? Uh, same thing, Instagram at L.KetoCholo. Very good. I am at Duckman Keto on Instagram. And uh, our podcast is on Instagram as well. And that is uh, Keto Man's Club Podcast. Uh, so uh, just. Uh, follow us there. You can get links to all of our social. Our website is theketomansclub.com. And there's links to the podcast, to both Facebook groups, to the Facebook page. There's just lots of links there um, to the, some of the brands that, that we uh, we support. And uh, so definitely check out the website, theketomansclub.com. It's a great website. Uh, place to be able to easily connect with us um, and get to all of the places where we are. So that's pretty much it. Any other final business before we shut things down for the evening? Did we ask Yogi what his favorite keto food is? Oh, we did not. Side steak. For all these foods and everything that you post up and have made on the road and everything, what's you've got an endless supply in your kitchen, up team tools and everything. What is your favorite, sir? Uh, probably my most used food is eggs. I I okay, use them in a not lot of things. Okay, that's answer for all the great <laughs> stuff that you put out there. I want yeah. something like you know this spectacular recipe of stuff or something. Um, eggs and steaks can't li- do it, dude. We got to have more because of living in, <laughs> because of living in the Philippines for so long. One of my uh, and, and you know uh, being around Hawaii and places like that. I'm a really big fan of Asian style food. So anything that kind of falls along that path, I'm really been one of my favorites that I make is uh Filipino style uh, adobo. 
and I do that with pork or chicken. Um, there's actually a recipe for how I do it in the Instapot up on uh, the website. And I love keto, the keto style loco moco that I make, which is uh, cauliflower rice, two hamburger patties, uh, keto brown gravy, bacon with bacon in it, and uh, two eggs on top with some um, little green onions over the top there too. You had me at gravy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's actually a bacon gravy not a brown gravy so yeah. nice. you had me bacon gravy. Fat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, i make a lot of gravies i'm a country boy by heart man i, I was li- actually originally from ohio so a lot of the country oh fried green tomatoes is one of my favorite foods on the planet <laughs> okay fair enough yeah very cool okay well That's it for this week. Until next week, make sure to eat meat, lift heavy, sleep, and repeat. Thank you for joining us for the Keto Man's Club podcast. Your support means the world to us. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss an episode. Would you help us spread the word about the Keto Man's Club by sharing with your friends and family? We're available on all podcast platforms, so just search for Keto Man's Club and you'll find us. If you would like to connect with us, you can do so a number of ways. Our web address leads to our Facebook group, theketomansclub.com. That's T H E. K-E-T-O-M-A-N-S-C-L-U-B dot com. You can also follow us on Instagram at Keto Man's Club Podcast. Lastly, if you have any comments or questions, feel free to reach out via email to Keto Man's Club Podcast at gmail.com. Thank you again for joining us today, and we look forward to hanging out with you again next week.